Herding dogs have been working by man's side for thousands of years, although the modern concept of herding dogs began in the late 1700s. Sheep herding today is a fading practice, and actual shepherds are few and far between. There are a few left, however, and their duties are still much the same, moving flocks of sheep around to prevent overgrazing and tending to their health. I check their feet. That's a big, big issue around here because we have a lot of wetness and we have a lot of foot problems. And um, that's what this is for. And uh, I catch them and I turn them over and I doctor their feet best I can. And that's what my job is. I don't get paid for it. The lack of pay is more than offset by the chance to train his dogs for competition. Competitive herding is a little known sport that has great popularity in Europe and Canada and is growing here in the States. The idea behind that is um, to move sheep in a straight line the best you can. You start with 100 points and every time you make a mistake they take points off. The highest score I've gotten so far with her is a 94 and with Quinn on the lower level I got a uh, an 86 out of 90, and uh, that's pretty hard to do. There's money and glory involved in the sport, but in the field lies the essence of herding. It's a symbiosis of man and animal, a fascinating connection working toward a single goal. Although Border Collies are arguably the most popular breed for herding, lots of breeds are capable. Any dog that can move like squirrels and want to go move squirrels, they can move sheep. And a lot of them have herding heritage behind them. And just never get a chance to do it. Jean has an Australian Shepherd. She ch tree chain, uh, trains all different breeds. Uh, I only stick with one breed, and that's a Border Collie. That, that's the only breed that can really do the job that I want. They're smart, very smart, easy to train. Doesn't take a lot, of, a, a lot more work to train these dogs than other breeds. Walk up. Come by. It's important that the bond between human and canine start at a very early age. I start my dogs out when a puppy and I feed them by hand for the first 30 days. So I get to bond with them. I feel it's very, very important that you bond with them. And, and as far as my training goes, before I even bring them to sheep, they have to have a stop or a lay down. I don't want to bring them on sheep unless they are behaved. The relationship between sheep and dog is one that's also complex that goes beyond training to instinct. They want to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to you take that prey drive and, and control that prey drive as best you can. The sheep as a prey animal, they have developed keen senses that we don't even know is happening. And when the dogs come on the scene, they're a predator. So they're used to trying to figure out a prey animal. So there's a big interaction between each other. Perhaps it's the sheer challenge of the task that has kept this ancient art alive for so long. It's very addicting. I used to windsurf and I thought that was addicting. I just think of it this way. To try to tell an animal that doesn't understand English and doesn't understand what you're saying, how to move sheep. So it's a real issue, you know, a real, real problem and it takes a lot of time. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Walk up, take your time, take your time, walk up. 